allow me to introduce our speaker today. Our summer jury show juror, Michelle Chowardy, is a Philadelphia-based artist and alumnus of the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. He has had several commercial art center gallery exhibitions in and around Philadelphia, and he shows regularly at Cerulean Art Gallery and Church Street Gallery in Westchester. He has work in several institutions such as New York Presbyterian Hospital and Capital Bank and Cancer Treatment Centers of America. He gives workshops at multiple art centers and has acquired national and international recognition and awards, including Best Landscape Award in the 151st Small Oil Painting Show by the Philadelphia Sketch Club. Chowardy has also published a book named Hidden Canvas, exploring digital abstract photography. In addition to all those amazing things, he's also a physician. So give it up for our speaker today, Mishul Chowardy. Thank you for joining us, Mishul. Oh, good morning, everyone. Thanks, Jean, uh, for your kind introduction. And thank you for allowing me to come to this uh, event and uh, talk about my work. And also, I would like to give a big thank to my friend, artist, and the director of, I think one of the directors of the Abington Art Center, Jenny Carduso, for introducing me uh, to this center and also inviting me to be on a juror. So it's a very humbling experience, and uh, I can't be more happy than, you know, what I'm doing right now, because I, I know that uh, it is an unprecedented time and very outstanding, uh, extraordinary time that we are passing. Everybody is feeling that. We are locked down at home. And as an artist, uh, you all feel the same way. Um, although, you know, we get a lot of time of working on our, in our studio, but still we'd like to go out and explore uh, the exhibitions, shows, workshop, and uh, go outside doing plein air, things like that. So um, it, is, uh, it is a tough time, but we have to go through and we'll win eventually. Uh, so without further delay, um, I'm gonna start talk about my uh, experience as an artist, and I'm going to share my paintings and drawings and things like that with, with you all. Uh, so this is the way uh, we are going to do is, uh, let me uh, introduce myself, uh, meaning that, you know, uh, what I do and what my painting is, where I'm coming from. And then, um, then the second part would be to let you know how I actually did the uh, judging and uh, selected work. I wish I could actually uh, talk about each and every pieces because Every single one is really phenomenal. Uh, but, you know, with the time limit, I have decided to select some, and then probably we'll have some interactive uh, session uh, on the, at the half of our presentation. So uh, where I was actually uh, giving you the background where I'm coming from. And uh, so Dhaka, the city of uh, Bangladesh, it is, you can see on the top, and uh, the slides and the bottom of the slide. The, there is always a construction. It is a very chaotic environment, but it is a full of life. And there's a lot of colors actually. Sometimes the house color with a very, you know, contemporary, I mean, uh, primary colors, I must say. And uh, then is the smog around it is looking that building is very, very attractive. And I get really attracted to this kind of thing. The environment that I grew up, uh, it is a full of uh, slogans, posters on the wall. And like I said, it is a chaotic environment, but you can see if you go to close to one of the walls, it's actually full of posters and paints and letters. These are the environment that I grew up actually. I grew up my younghood and the college. Uh, this is the experience that I was gathering. As an artist, you know, I know, everybody knows that, you know, when sometimes we don't work, we don't work 24 hours, thanks God. And, uh, but the experience that we gather, 
and 24 hours by going out, looking at things, that actually stays with us. And when we come to studio, when we actually, you know, when the rubber hit the uh, road, I guess all this experience that we gather, it comes to play. It comes to play and we actually basically execute on our canvas or anything like that. But it is coming from all a daily visual experience that we gather. And look at these cables. Look at these cables, which actually uh, the, you know, the cables of thousands of turns and turn and this, that. You, when you go to close to these things, actually, you can actually create a very interesting composition. And you can see there's some balance actually coming out. So I moved to Philadelphia in 1989, long time ago. And ever since I've been there, pretty boring, uh, me. But you know, I fell in love with Philadelphia. I can't imagine myself going to any, another city, believe me. Uh, it is actually the connection that I got. Uh, you can see the building in Philadelphia, particularly in the uh, older cities, well, now it is getting gentrified and all these great buildings and everything is disappearing. But I actually got a connection with the uh, city that I grew up and the city now I am. So I see that those irregularities, I see those letters, I see those chaotic and, and sometimes, you know, a mysterious the image that I see on uh, in front of me. This is uh, you know around Kensington area, and uh, after usually after the rain, he, I take my camera out. I take shots, and what happens is it actually blurs the unnecessary thing and the thing that I wanted to see the shapes and the perspective that comes out. Um, well, this is the area that I go back and forth on every single day uh, when I go to my work. Uh, I don't recommend you to take your photos while driving, but forget about it right now. Just pretend that I didn't do it. So um, this is another image, you know, after the rain and the thing that I actually get attracted to, look at these highways, uh, the freeways and all this white thing that actually coming out and the little bit of orange, you know, in the background of very blurred monochrome. So this is what I actually get attracted to. Uh, this is uh, something that also interests me when I, you know, go out uh, in the city I look around, I look around things, I look around on the pavement, the wall. You know, walking with me is a big deal actually. Uh, you can imagine how painful uh, for my wife to walk with me uh, because um, as an artist, you know that the things actually always attract us. Uh, different things, different little things. So this shadow actually was, you can imagine it's coming from those light posts. Uh, I take my camera out. Sometimes you have all this iPhone and take a photos and then eventually you go back and do composition. So the title was Franz Klein on the sidewalk. And you, you know that Franz, I think he was a Philadelphian artist. Uh, I like those broad base, you know, the lines and markings. So uh, this is something that I do all the time. Uh, this is a slide you can see that the, wherever you go actually um, in all over the world, the cities carry a, something similar. They share things with each other without knowing it. Um, on the top, you can see the city I grew up, Dhaka, uh, the wall, and uh, the bottom one is Philadelphia, right? So. You know, people draw things, people do things without any knowledge of art. This is a spontaneous 
creation of paintings and art every single day. That's what attracts me actually. And that has a lot of energy in it. So this is what I actually uh, do when I do not, do not paint, when I'm not in my studio. So I take photos and I crop. So for example, here you can see on the left hand side of my slide that I took a photo of, um, of the wall and then I cropped. I cropped this interesting area. I made the composition and a little white things here actually makes things very, very interesting. So this is one of the uh, photo also uh, that you can see. Uh, it is actually nails on the uh, surface of a wood. Guess where it's coming from? This is a you know, terminal part of Dhaka, the city, and they are repairing the boat. They're repairing the boat and I went to close to see these boats and took that image and made the composition here. Okay, so you can go around with, a, with your camera, uh, different part of the world, different cities of the world and take a nice images from wall. One of the thing that, you know, um, advantages of uh, going to uh, the cities uh, in uh, developing countries is that, you know, there's no really room regulations of what you can do on the wall. So people actually free to do uh, things. And because of that, you create uh, something very interesting for artists like us. So you can imagine that I took this, uh, this image on the right hand side from the wall in India. I don't actually do anything very dramatic or very uh, change image too much. Uh, I do brightness and sharpness a little bit on computer on the uh, on the uh, app. But other than that, I try to keep things as it is actually. This is uh, in Dhaka. Um, it's interesting. Uh, these kids actually was. Uh, standing in front of the wall. I wanted, wanted to take photos of the wall. I thought it's interesting, but you know, guess what? This kid actually came up to me and said, well, take my photo first, and then I will allow you to take the photo of the wall. So uh, it was very, very interesting experience just sharing with you. So these are a different you know, part of the wall, different part of the city. So in Philadelphia, I also went to, uh, as you can probably, you all know that, you know, Eastern Penitentiary, the, uh, the museum, uh, I guess the first prison in, uh, in USA or in Philadelphia, they actually, what they did, they kept their cells as it is. As you know, probably you all uh, visited that place. So I took my camera, they allowed me to take photos. So, this is what I found. This is what I found and this is what I found. Okay. So I thought it's very interesting. And you can see this is another one I'm sharing, New York City. It's a basketball, um, you know, the uh, people play basketball here and then the wall actually, they did, somebody did graffiti, I guess. So they actually uh, put a paint on top of that to cover it up but it created a very nice composition without really knowing that it can actually make a artwork for me. So this is what I, I did. Uh, I took a photo of that and I, you know, did the um, little bit of composition and a little bit of sharpness change on uh, Photoshop. This is from Philadelphia. Um, this is another image of Philly. So this is a very bright, vivid color. You can see uh, one of the wall in India. Uh, this is Istanbul and Turkey. This is an interesting slide that I uh, usually share with people and artists. Now the left hand side, 
um, this is my photograph, okay? It's taken from one of the wall in Dhaka. And the right side, you can see, uh, if you know this artist, Spanish artist, uh, during, you know, he grew up during the civil war and then, you know, continued his work. One of the rebellious artists with, you know, Juan Mero and others. I actually love his work. His work is extremely spontaneous and very earthy, uh, organic. So I compared my photo with his, one of his paintings. And then I asked myself, you know, why I'm doing it actually? Why I'm looking at things that I'm showing you? I guess as an artist, we always look at each other's work. We always look at big artist work, you know, the famous artist work, and it stays with us. And when we look at things, we actually find those things. We can relate those things actually with our visual image. So you can see the similarity between Anthony Tapiz and my work, I actually thought my work is more interesting because of this green. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, the difference is that he's painting probably $60 million and my photograph probably like 10 bucks. Uh, well, this is, I wanted to share something here interesting. This is a bus depot where lots of lots of you know, buses actually uh, gather. And I go there and I take photos of the surface of the buses. You know, the buses in Dhaka and uh, India and Bangladesh and those countries, they always get scratches, you know, uh, with each other and, uh, you know, it's, it's chaotic. So they create very interesting uh, phenomena. And you can see these are the surface of the bus. I take photos from the surface of the bus. This is what I'm doing. You know, it is very interesting experience when you take photos in a crowded area, people get, gather around you and see if you are a very weird person taking those uh, photos. It doesn't make any sense to them. Uh, so, you know, I found that I thought it is very interesting. Photographers are violent people. First they frame you then they shoot you and then they hang you on the wall. <laughs> so um, this is actually from the surface of the bus. You can see such a vibrant color with the texture and you know, so I, this is another one, it's a little monochromatic, but look at, look at this phenomena, like this red, small red here and there popping up and it happened because of the layers because of the layers of paints, layers of paints over time, over years. And, you know, that's basically is giving such a nice texture and everything. So I wanted to share something very funny to you actually. Um, this is some amazing race that some of you probably familiar is, uh, you know, the uh, reality show in TV. So, I usually don't watch TV, but one day I was like in front of the TV and I see that, you know, this amazing race. And if you know, they actually send those couple to different cities around the world and they ask you to do some, you know, adventurous work and challenging work. So they send these kids to Dhaka, the city I grew up. And the first thing they ask them to do is to paint all the surfaces. And I was screaming myself, I'm, oh my God, I'm losing my work. And, but look, they're so happy here doing that. So I thought it was very interesting actually. So this is another city in India uh, called Hyderabad. And you know, the wall of those buildings interior, and you can, you can see so many marks, so many marking. So uh, we actually did a, a workshop and work tour in Kensington in 2014. It was very interesting. People, neighborhood was thought that we are crazy taking pictures of those, uh, but it was fun. Sometimes you can actually look at things on the mailbox. And it, this is one example that, you know, I took a photo from the mailbox and I did some sharpness and brightness and it, it's actually created like something like this. 
So it's something experience uh, or experiment that you can do. This is from the New York City. One of the, you know, west, uh, uh, the, the, the garbage uh, can actually, the surface of the garbage can. And uh, I took a photo of that one. This is another uh, surface of the wall in Dhaka. Uh, this is from the bus. Um, and this is very, very interesting one. This is actually uh, Pennsylvania Academy of the Finers, the studio that I go on every Saturday and do a drawing. So one of the can actually the, uh, has, you know, people, I think this, they, they just throw the, some paints on the top of that. And I took a photo of that one. Um, so this is the last image of my photograph that I wanted to share. Uh, this is from the surface of a uh, house where they do a festival every year and paint the, paint the house in different colors, very primary colors, and created uh, this phenomenal texture and the color uh, you can actually imagine. So um, why I'm actually sharing this? The reason I'm sharing this is because by the way, I have a book you can actually see on a hidden canvas, uh, the name of that one uh, by Blurb. So the reason I'm sharing this is basically, I'm a painter by heart. The photograph is my experience. And I, I use that as my inspiration and also point of reference. The way that these photographs that I shared with you that happened because people didn't have any knowledge of doing art on that, those walls. They did it spontaneously with a lot of energy. And that's what I like about that. And you can, if you can translate this on your canvas, I think you can actually capture that energy. You can actually take that spontaneity. And the, the way that it was built up on the wall, I think my painting also does the same thing. So I'll share with you now my painting. So this is a building that, you know, uh, that you see that um, in, um, on the Columbus Avenue uh, in Philadelphia, in front of the Ikea. I don't know if you ever went there. So, but this is one of the building that actually uh, I got obsessed with, you know? I really got obsessed with people, uh, get obsessed with human being, but you know, uh, I get obsessed with the buildings. Uh, so this is, the reason is that is I thought the shape and the composition and the different time of the day, the light actually reflects on the building and create a very interesting phenomenon. So I did my interpretation of this building. So let me share with you. This is one interpretation of, of that building by doing the paint. Now, my paintings are uh, very small. I find um, useful and I find actually attracted to small paintings because it is very personal. I can also create a lot of paintings at the same time. If you come to my studio, uh, well, this is one of my studio you can see in the background actually. Uh, if you come to my studio, I have a ton of paintings every single day, every single moment, uh, because those are small. And I work on those paintings uh, at the same time. And, uh, but I never know which one is gonna be, you know, taking how much time. And each one can take from like a couple weeks to sometimes months, sometimes a year actually. I get frustrated a lot. And that frustration actually comes in a positive way sometimes. So this is one interpretation of my painting, uh, of that building. You can see the layers of paints and these colors that popping up here and there. And, uh, and then this is another interpretation of the building. Okay, the same building. I probably did at least 30 or 40 I can share with you, including in sketches and everything of the same building, okay? Uh, finally, I'm glad that I, I came, up, came out of it 
and, um, and uh, I actually did a lot of other buildings. This is another interpretation of the same building. Okay, so as an artist, we actually, um, we are not a photographer, as you know, as we all know. Our job is to interpret things in our own ways. Um, that's what I always believe. That's what I always do. And it should come from your heart, not from brain. And the technique that I was using in each and every of this painting actually comes from the experience that I was gathering as an artist, as a visual experience while roaming around the city. I think, I, I, and I, I actually hope that, you know, you uh, understand now where these paintings are coming from, why I'm doing the painting that I'm sharing with you. Michelle, if I may interrupt, I have a question yeah. in the chat for you from Neela. Yeah. She's asking, do you sand or scrape the painting as you build up the layers? Oh, excellent question. I think, uh, you know, uh, you asked me something that uh, you really wanted me to give out my secrets. So, <laughs> uh, yes, what I do, you know, uh, the process of my painting actually takes a lot of patience. I put a layer of paint and then I actually let it dry, bone dry. And yes, I use sand paper and I sand them. I scrap them. During the sanding, actually, uh, during the sanding, you can create a form. You can do a sanding in a way that actually sometimes uh, making a marking, which can be very, very interesting. So yeah. Uh, I, do, I do the sanding a lot. Uh, and then when you sand, you take out the, you know, unnecessary uh, paints and extra paints. And then when you put a fresh layer of paint on top of that, it actually, uh, it actually becomes very, very interesting. So for example, here, I sand it out and you can see all these markings here from the sand, right? And then when you put a fresh paint, sometimes the transparent paint, you can create this kind of phenomenon, okay, which becomes very, very interesting and give you a lot of depth in it. So I hope that, that answered the question. Yeah, I think that was pretty good. Thank you. You're welcome. So this is my crime scene that I wanted to share with you. Uh, you can create your studio inside the car and uh, my inside my car is not very pretty, you can imagine. So one advantage of working inside the car is that nobody bothers you, okay? You're on your own and you can actually park in any corner of the street and just, you know, lock your car and do your work. So you can see um, working, this is my friend Art. He sometimes give me company, so, um, you know, this is something that I do uh, in like from 15 seconds to uh, probably uh, two or three minutes. These are very quick ske sketches that I do inside my car. And I use charcoal, I use dry paint. Uh, dry paint means that, you know, I put, uh, I pour paint on the, you know, uh, on my, uh, paint box and I let it dry for a couple of days actually. Uh, so when you use them, uh, it works very well on, um, on the sketchbooks, sketchbook. Uh, you may ask whether I use any uh, actually jazzers. Uh No, I don't. I work just on the surface without any preparation of the surface. So these are some work with the pen, pen and watercolor. Now, this is my studio and this is, you know, uh, something that I do most of the time. So I do a lot of sketches like I'm, I'm sh I shared with you inside my car, outside, I take photos, all sorts of things, whatever I, find interesting the buildings and things like that. 
I, um, you know, I take photos and then I come back to my studio and do studio paintings. Studio paintings, like I said, it takes from weeks to months to year. And uh, do I spend my, all my time in one painting? Absolutely not. I, like I said, I have 20 to 30 to 40 paints, paintings or pieces all the time in my studio. Uh, but I never throw any of my pieces away because I'm frustrated. I work those frustration, those depression, I turn that into a positive way and come back to my paint and say, I look at things in a different way, actually. I don't necessarily start with one subject and, and end up with the same. I, it may change a total. Uh, this paint, uh, this painting actually has probably seven or eight layers underneath. Uh, maybe uh, I started with completely different subjects, okay? So I'm just gonna share those paintings. Now this is an interesting one. You can see that I was working with the yellow. Um, sometimes, you know, the uh, Indian yellow, one of my really nice and, and favorite um, paint that I used. I started with those things. I was not going anywhere actually. So I take, took some of my paint, which was really dry. And then I randomly painted on top of yellow thing. I thought it worked actually. This is a little different uh, than what I was sharing. Those are very vibrant yellow and orange colors, but this is a little different uh, painting and the color uh, palette that you can see. Um, this is done outside um, and very, very fast. This is something that uh, I also do uh, bushes. Sometimes, uh, I don't know, for some reason, these bushes actually, um, you know, um, attracts me a lot, foliages. So um, guess what? I started with, um, you know, doing uh, probably the cityscape, but then it was not going anywhere. So I changed my subject and I used those layers that I, I created over weeks. And then I turned into foliage and bushes um, was going around and looking at the greens finally after you know uh, lockdown. So that actually um, did a lot of impression on me. Uh, you can see in this, in this painting, there are a lot of scratches, there are a lot of markings that I did with my uh, sandpaper and on those. So this is another one. This is one of the recent um, painting that I did. Uh, lots of lots of markings you can see. Uh, you can ask me why this six actually. It has absolutely no meaning, okay? Sometimes I use this because I try to, try to uh, come out from the, uh, you know, the monotone, monotonous layer and the surface. Uh, it gives a little surprise and change. Uh, so that's why I use the letters. And also, like I said, you know, my experience over years is actually um, letters. I'm sure all of you has, I mean, we cannot live without letters actually. In every single day, we are surrounded by letters is in a TV, it's a newspaper, outside, billboard, everywhere. So um, now I'm going to share um, a little different thing, completely different thing. And also uh, the reason I'm sharing this one because uh, the painting that I've been doing for probably past 20 years, I couldn't have done this without actually going to PAFA, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts. Long time ago, I took, in my lifetime, I took only one course actually with the painting. And that was before 2000. I, um, after that 12th session in, the, in that course, I hated it. I did not hate the course actually itself. 
I had a realization, big realization inside me that I'm not that good in drawing. And the drawing is something is so basic that if I don't achieve it, I cannot be a good artist. So I promised myself that I have to learn how to draw and then come back to painting. Okay. So I started going to Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts alumni drawing session. And very friendly environment. You can walk in every Saturday from 9.30 to 12.30. And then I started drawing the figures. Okay. So figures are, why figures actually? I believe that figure is the most beautiful creation on earth. And also it is something that you have to be very, very perfectionist with the anatomy and everything. I mean, you can draw, I can draw a chair without, a, you know, some part of the chair is missing or something like that. You're not gonna get really, you won't have any reaction. But if I draw something, a human figure without a perfection, without a good anatomy, it will actually, uh, you'll have a reaction. So I thought to get into perfection, uh, the human figure is, is necessary uh, for your skill and draw. And also it has actually, uh, it, it is something that I can relate to uh, myself and the human being, as a human being, it actually moves. It has blood in it, right? It has heart in it, it has energy in it, it can speak to you. So I think this is something that, you know, is a good subject if someone uh, really learned how to draw. So I started doing that. Um, and this is something that I'm not saying this is a subject, my primary subject. I draw because I wanted to, I want to actually paint my city landscapes the way I draw. Um, I make a lot of markings and lines as I, I shared with you. And those markings and lines coming from the practice of drawing. The lines coming broad and disappearing, comes and goes. You know, that's something that uh, I learned from practicing drawing. So these are the things I've been doing. Um, just wanted to share with you and, uh, you know, uh, now, I'm going to just tell you that I do a lot of workshop. So um, this is me at Cerulean. And I also do workshop at Norristown Art Center. Uh, I also went to New Zealand uh, last year. It was a really, really great experience um, working with them. It's a beautiful country. Uh, I do a show uh, in different places, like Jean mentioned in the beginning. There's a show going on right now in Westchester, uh, Church Street Gallery. If you guys are interested, uh, go and take a look at it in person, my paint, paintings. So uh, that's what I've been doing. Uh, so I'll pause here and see if you have any questions or questions later, Jean, uh, I don't know, but I'm going to uh, start uh, talking about the, um, uh, talking about the uh, show that um, that you guys all you entered and how I did the selection and things like that. Okay, great. Sounds good. If anybody has questions right now for Mishul about him and his body of work, I've got one from Paula. I'm going to ask Paula to unmute herself. Hi, Mishul. I have to say that I think your work is extraordinary and it reminds me of when I was in Israel, where the archeologists would dig deeply into one small area and get from one era to the next. And I just felt like there was a real connection to that with the history in your photographs and also in your work of knowing that there are stories that are not really revealed uh, in the layers that are hidden. And I just think it's, it's just beautiful, beautiful work. So thank you. 
Uh, thank you so much for your kind words. Yes, um, I think I can relate to what you're saying actually. It is actually very interesting. And uh, if you go around the cities in different part of the world, you can see the same phenomena and you can relate uh, your own experience and bring it to your studio and execute. Uh, yes, thanks for sharing. Thank you. I've just got a comment from Maxine Schwartz in the chat. She says, brilliant, love the talk, many thanks. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, um, if there are any other questions, I think we'll get to the second part of your talk uh, discussing the show and how you made your decisions. Okay, so um, let me see. Do you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, excellent. And you see my screen? That's right, yep. Okay. So, um, well, thank you all for submitting your work. Uh, I have to tell you that I enjoyed a uh, few more, uh, you know, the uh, show. And this show was special, special because you know, you all actually were working in your studio and you took your time and sent those pieces and you didn't stop. So, you know, I can tell you each and every one, you're not depressed. Like <laughs> a lot of people are now complaining, uh, sitting at home uh, because of the lockdown, but you're enjoying your time. So I thank you so much for doing that. And the other thing is that you know, I really, Jin gave me a hard time, I mean, really hard time by saying that, yo, well, they're not gonna be a winner. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I told him, I told I, him every single thing to get in. I was just kidding, Jin. No, this shit didn't say that. Um, well, actually, Jin and Jenny made my work really, really easy by saying that there is not going to be a winner. Let me tell you one thing. To, you know, to find out who is the first and second and third winner, it is a hard job. When you can actually do a preliminary selection, uh, maybe not uh, you know, spending hours and hours and hours, but when it comes to winner, it's really, really tough. Um, because each and every pieces that you select, finally, everyone is really phenomenal. And most of those paintings, the pieces that were sent, I really have a hard time to you know, reject work. Um, as a juror, you know, it is a tough job because like I shared my work, I shared my experience, it influences you. You get bias actually. So as a juror, I believe that I have to come out from the bias, the biasness. I have to open up my mind and eyes and look at things in a different ways. I may not do the same techniques and process, but I have a fascination about, you know, different process and, uh, you know, the different medias. So I try to keep that in mind. So first thing what I did actually, I did not go through each and everyone's personal statement or website. What I did, I took a look at paintings and pieces without knowing who you are. So I did that first. So I did some preliminary selection from that, okay? 
what are the things that I kept in my mind? I'm a person who actually likes to see work where someone is seeing things in a different ways. Okay. Uh, the common things are coming in a different ways to you. Uh, you. We can actually spend all our day going out and take photos of cities with a different perspective. We see that all the time. But there should be something new actually, you know, something that actually uh, move me, something that I can love it, something I can hate it, something that I can have speak, okay? If I see something that actually not doing anything, any reaction to me, I don't know whether that piece actually makes any anything. Um, so that's what I, I love about, you know, seeing and seeing pieces. I also keep it in mind that, you know, um, I need to pick up works from different media. And that actually not too tough for me because I share with you that I do, I, and I work on a different medias from photograph to drawings and paintings. Only thing I don't do is install, installation art and also uh, sculpture. I wish I could do that. It has a different talent you need. So um, I kept all those things in my mind Then I selected. So we selected about uh, 70 pieces. I think there are like more than, you know, 140 works. Gene, correct me if I'm wrong. So uh, I think that's, that's what it is. Uh, you, may see, you may say that was liberal, but believe me, I had a hard time to reject works because every single pieces and most pieces is really, really great. So um, then I thought, you know, um, I may have to select some of them that I can talk and maybe I will ask you to share your thoughts. So like I said, I wish I could talk about every single pieces and hear from you, but it's not possible. So I selected some of them. And uh, Jean told me that, you know, we, uh, the show looks phenomenal and it's really nice looking on the wall. Uh, they did a really great, great job. So I'm sure uh, you'll go there and see and enjoy it. And I'm looking forward to see you guys on, um, you know, on the closing ceremony. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to go with some of the paintings, like I said, or pieces uh, that actually, um, that I wanted to talk. So, Okay, so do you see it? Jean, do, do you see it? Uh, it's very small. It's not the major thing on my screen. Okay. Uh, now I don't see it. Hmm. Do you see it? I do not, but it does say I'm viewing your screen, so I don't get that. What, what are you trying to show, Michelle, the photographs? Yeah. I see it on my screen. Is anyone else having any issues? I can see it. I see it on my screen. I see it. I see it as well. Okay. I see it well. Okay. So, Ian, you can hear me, right? You can hear me well? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So this piece is actually photographed from Jennifer Brinton. And uh, I loved it because the title is actually always home. And you can see that the, it goes with the images we can see here. It's a runway uh, in the airport and the letters and the composition I thought is very, very interesting. Uh, 
like I said, I then I after the selection, I went to some of your uh, you know website and look at statement. And in her statement, she said that looking at things with the fresh eyes and awareness of the surroundings. So I really loved that piece actually. So uh, I don't know if Jennifer Brinton joined us, uh, wanted to share something with us. Is the is the artist here? Okay. So I guess not. Yeah. What was her name again? Michelle, remind me. Jennifer, Jennifer Brinton. Yeah, I don't see her on the list. So. So let me go to next one, which is this one. Do you see the image? Yeah, it looks good. Okay, so this is from Jean Bardick and uh, Bucks County painter. Title is Packets 2. It's a silk screen on panel. And uh, seems like the works with the textures and things like that. Uh, there's a few more pieces in the show. I thought it's really, really uh, nicely done. Uh, look at the composition, the colors. Although it is monochrome, but it is not exactly monochrome. Uh, so I really love that piece. I don't know if Jean Bardic is here. Wanted to yeah, share something? She is here today. So if you'd like, Jean, you can talk about your work a little bit. Um, this is a silk screen on panel. The other two pieces were silk screens on vellum. Um, I've always done a lot with layering, patterns, textures. Um, I take photographs on some of my hiking trips, both to national and regional parks, and use that, uh, convert it into a photo silkscreen method of printing. And I also um, have recently been interested in architectural facades of buildings, and that's what the other works also incorporate. Excellent. Thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you. All right, so let's see. The next one is Nick D'Angelo. Uh, the title of the work is uh, actually, uh, let me see, let me put this. Yeah, I think they look nice and big like that, Michelle, when you have it on the slider. So you don't need to open every single one okay. um, if it's easier for you. Yeah. Thank you. So this is Dick, Nick um, D'Angelo. Uh, the title of this piece is Corner Pocket while on board. Uh, I couldn't find any statement, uh, it's all right. But um, I thought this is really a cool painting. First, I thought it was a photograph. But, you know, even though this is a very realistic painting, but it has a lot of modernity in it, actually. Look at the colors, the way that, you know, it was placed very carefully, the red, yellow and not so yellow and everything else is monochrome and it's a capture of the moment the capture of the moment it is there uh, so you know uh nick i don't know if you are here uh, i wanted to know what actually um made you to do this? And is this something that you do on a regular basis? And what is the process actually? If Nick is there. Michelle, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, so Nick actually, I, I talk to him a lot because he submits to every one of our shows practically. Um, he couldn't make it today. He's not confident in his tech savviness, but you can probably ask him that at a later time. <laughs> All right. I thought I'm the only, you know, 
Oh, no. Well, there were others, believe me. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but um, this piece is really, really cool. Uh, and it's, it is a large piece. Uh, if you go to the show, you can actually uh, see how beautiful this piece actually is. So let me bring um, the one that I thought uh, is very time sensitive work. Quarantine, the title of this work is Quarantine. It's a very large piece in a while. The reason I love this piece because, you know, it, like I said, it's a very time sensitive and, you know, appropriate. Uh, piece. I don't. Well, uh, if uh, I'm not sure whether that actually the quarantine, the current quarantine, is going through the artist's mind. This is by Laura. Uh, Laura Diane. Laura Digas. Digas. Okay. Sorry about that. So, you know, look at those mood actually of these two boys. Although they are in a you know nice. Um, you know, gear and everything, but it is a little off the mood, looking on the opposite side. Um, so the background also has an image that I thought is not so um, welcoming, the, the surface. Something is, you know, like a storm or something coming. Well, this is my own interpretation actually. Um, and you can see the, the, the most interesting part that I, I see in this painting actually is the use of yellow, the stripe. Usually as an artist, you can, you know, that when we use something extraordinary and primary color bright, um, you want it to balance it. Otherwise this paint, whole painting, the image tilt in one direction actually but it is done in a very, very careful way, okay? Um, sometimes my eyes are going to the right direction, but it doesn't stay there. It goes in the opposite direction too. So the whole composition, the mood, the background, the use of color, I thought is a very, very interesting piece. So if Laura is there, uh, you wanted to share something with us? Yeah, Laura is actually here today. She takes oil painting with Abington Art Center. Laura, would you like to say something about your work? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for selecting it. Um, I'm very honored you picked some of my pieces. Uh, normally, I paint my kids playing sports or I paint other people's kids playing sports. And when everything got shut down in March, or just looking around my house for inspiration, I noticed my kids would put on their winter boots and go outside and, and hold their sports gear. So I just became really inspired by watching them make do with what they had in, in the condition. So um, I took photographs of them outside and then I wanted to kind of play with a composition that normally wouldn't work and make sense. But in this current quarantine social distance time, something about it works even though it shouldn't. Um, I will say the yellow is kind of a happy accident. My kids just happen to be wearing yellow shorts. So I wasn't really concentrating on colors as much as I was trying to capture a mood. Excellent. So mm -hmm. let me ask you, um, did you put a six feet distance between them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I put as, as much distance as I could in a, a 40 by 30 inch canvas. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. So, this is the next image that I wanted to share. This is an absolute the gorgeous in an image. You guys see it? Yeah, it looks good. The, uh, the title of this piece is 71 Camaro. It's a photography. The vivid color. When I was looking at um, the website, uh, John Slavin, he's the photographer for Philadelphia Inquirer for many, many years. So you can see 
why he was in photographer of Philadelphia Inquirer. This is an absolutely fantastic image. You can see this red, bright red on one corner. And then usually we balance those things with a, a sim similar or close to that color on the other side. So this cone actually worked very well, this red cone. So I wanted to ask um, John uh, if you wanted to share and where you did it, when did you do that? And uh, is that red cone just happened to be, a, a, you know, the accident or you uh, carefully used it um, before you took the shot? Uh, yeah, thanks for uh, picking this picture. Uh, it is one of my favorite, well, recent favorite pictures. Um, I've been out to Bonneville. It's a, you know, it's on the salt flats. And I've been out uh, several times. Uh, I've made several trips out there and um, I mainly use, I use a mixture of digital and film. This was film. Uh, this is a film camera, a Leica. And I was concentrating on just the, uh, the Camaro itself. And just on the periphery, I saw the Model T uh, pickup going by and I just lifted the camera. So I had no idea that I really had this picture until I uh, processed the film. Well, thank you. So John, do you agree with me that this red cone actually worked very well? Yeah, I think it works. I mean, I'm glad, it, uh, you know, when people, uh, when they like it. It's sort of like a, an homage to Gary Winogrand. I don't know if you were familiar with his work. Uh, he was primarily a black and white photographer, but uh, he did shoot. Uh, he did shoot in color, and uh, uh, several years ago, they, uh, there was a book put out of the, of his color images. I and it was see. mainly taken on a road trip uh, across uh, the United States, and he mm -hmm. shot color. Excellent. And this is way back. That was way back in 1964. Uh huh. Wow. Yeah. Great. Congratulations. So, All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you for submitting it and joining this um, show. So the next one is actually Julie Mann. Uh, Aman, I, I'm sorry if I pronounce incorrectly. Um, see, I don't know if Julie is here. Uh, Julie is not here today. But, you know, just wanted to tell you that this image doesn't do the justice of this work. This is a sort of installation kind of uh, piece, um, you have to go and take a look at it actually in person. So this is something that um, was in honor of the migrant children in the Southern border and they're fenced. And uh, I wanted to just read that to you. It addresses migrant children, their sufferings at, at Southern border alternating image and mirror reflections. So, you know, again, like I said, this does not do the justice, but you probably need to take a look at the in-person. I hope you do that. And their sufferings, the misery, their, you know, uh, it, it actually comes out. Um, so, you know, this piece speaks for itself. I wish Julie is with us and can talk about it a little bit more. So let me go to the next piece, which is. Uh, Michelle. Um, yeah. Like somebody has raised their hand. Okay. Might have a question, Cassandra. Can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Yeah. Um, so the question is, are, are we actually able to visit these works in person? I thought they were just online. This was an online show. Yes, you actually can. Um, for specifics, our gallery hours are Tuesday through Thursday, noon to 6 p.m. We don't have the entire show on our website as of yet, but it will be up shortly. Thank you, Jean. Okay, so the next image is from Hafsa Siddika Imam. I don't know if she is here. Uh, I like that piece because, you know, it is very time appropriate piece. Uh, very carefully, 
you know, highlighted the empty bench. And she has another piece I'll show you. And it actually reminds you instantly what is she talking about, actually. Uh, our time, the present time, uh, nobody's there. But she's finding a hope there, actually. Uh, so sometimes, like I said, you know, you don't have to have, uh, you know, the, the most skills of things in the world, although this is very skillful work, I'm not any way saying that it's not skillful. Uh, and sometimes you can actually use those uh, images with our modern technology uh, of, uh, you know, this uh, Photoshop, uh, although, you know, uh, it is controversial, people have a different take on Photoshop's, but I thought that, you know, we live in a technology and we need to use those appropriately. And uh, as long as it doesn't destroy your uh, subject and the, what you wanna say. You can see another of our image is empty chairs, but very carefully, you know, colored. Uh, oh, I mean, it, it was a colorful chairs, but I think could she put a little more, um, little more emphasis on those colors because there is a hope. So if uh, Hafsa is there, I would like to invite her to, you know, talk about, about the her piece. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Mashil. Uh, thank you for choosing my pieces for the exhibition. And thank you, Abington Art Center, for uh, offering us this opportunity uh, to get connected during this COVID isolation. And ultimately, I found a reason to thank COVID for giving us chances uh, to look back to our life. So actually, uh, I'm a fine art graduate during high school, parallelly while doing my uh, formal education and uh, since then I was actually doing a composition uh, mainly in oil media and then I get uh, I got lost during my professional uh, period of medical school uh, so I'm actually a traveler for last 10 years uh, so during my busy period in medical school and my professional time I started uh, taking photographs I get obsessed with CT and uh, strips. So these are two pieces actually was taken on February at the beginning of this uh, pandemic when we were not actually under restriction. And I'm also from, actually from Canada. And I also from the same city like Mashil, I uh, born in Dhaka, Bangladesh, but I uh, had a major part of my life in uh, Toronto, Canada. So I took these images from uh, Fashion District. If you've been there in Toronto, you know Fashion District, that's actually uh, Queen West in downtown Toronto. And if you uh, walk through the areas, you can see all these vibrant colors and all those streets are covered with uh, wall arts and street painting. Uh, so I'm actually a street photographer and uh, I found this, uh, you know, uh, this is very uh, interesting, like even we are staying in the same life now like before, but without human out there, everything seems meaningless and very empty and lifeless. Uh, so at the beginning of this pandemic, I started getting called from my passion and everybody is so stressed and restless, like they cannot take it anymore, this isolation and quarantine. So I found like this painting actually represent like this photograph, it should be like waiting to end of this pandemic. Thank you. I Thank actually you, have, a, I have a question for Hafsa from the chat. It's from Rosanna. She's asking, um, where did you take these photos? And you kind of already addressed the second half was what spoke to you about them, but she would like to know where you took them. Uh, uh, actually, you know, I didn't Photoshop this uh, photograph at all. This actually I took with my iPhone 10 camera, like the regular iPhone 10, you know, 
I just focus on, uh, as because I mentioned, like I'm mainly a composition painter in uh, oil media. So uh, uh, composition means, you know, like playing with color. So vibrant color always attract me. So I just focus on my uh, perspective, color composition and framing. That's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Imam. Uh, so we share things, uh, I guess, professionally. Uh, I actually, uh, the, the color that uh, you're showing here, I actually thought it was very, very, um, you know, appealing. And because I, I do um, some brightness and sharpness on Photoshop, I thought it was like that. I'm so sorry if I misspoke. Uh, but it is even you now it, it, it looks like even uh, more interesting that how vibrant those colors are so vivid. So thank you for sharing your philosophy and thoughts behind it. Thank you. Uh, Just to add, like if you ever visit to Toronto, any one of you, if you go to uh, Fashion District, that's downtown Toronto, Queen West, you can see all the vibrant streets there, full of colors and lots of uh, wall arts. All right. Yeah, thank you. So we'll try to visit that place. So um, thank you again. The next piece is actually from John Gamier. I hope I pronounce this right. And this is a painting which the title is actually, uh, let me close this one. Uh, the title is Rehearsal. So um, the reason I, I love this paint, pa uh, painting, uh, by the way, it is a very large wall uh, on canvas. The, the reason I love this one because, you know, I, I love surprise actually uh, on pieces. And what surprised was this one, this person here. Uh, if I um, do this one, I would probably use uh, white on all, Durian Crimson and, and do this, um, the shirt that she's wearing and the white hair. And you can see the focus on there actually for some reason. Um, and I, I thought that it actually works so well. It works so well. It reminds me the paintings in the Renesha period actually where you do these figures and focus on few things actually. So um, the, your work seems like it works with your design and, and illustration uh, and you capture the mood um, and things like that. So if John, uh, if you're there, I would like to hear more from you. And uh, I wanted to say, uh, I want to see if you actually agree with me. Uh, you don't have to, but uh, <laughs> I wanted to. <laughs> John is actually not here today, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, I really like this painting too. Yeah. This is a, this is a really great one. Okay, so the next one is Michelle Soslau. And uh, let me just open up the, her piece. Michelle is here uh, today. I know Talk Michelle. To number of years and uh, actually I was fortunate to do a show with her at Cerulean and um, you know when I was looking at this piece uh, it is quite different than what I know about Michelle's work I thought this is very very interesting so this in this piece the uh, the uh, title of this piece is actually looking at Turner and uh, looking at Turner's uh, the uh, shipwreck uh, I guess, and uh, this is one of the most famous painting of Turner. And I found it's very, very interesting because the subject itself is very interesting. The title is very interesting and the use of yellow. Uh, Michelle is very courageous of using the yellow and the corner, lower corner of the painting. And this person is actually wearing um, kind of Santa Claus um, get up. Um, and looking at the Turner. Uh, so uh, 
it is a very loose and fluidity of the painting that I, I really loved and the use of color um, and the courageousness of uh, using the color. So, uh, Michelle, uh, if you can share your thoughts uh, on your painting. Sure. Um, thank you, Michelle. And thank you, Abington Art Center. Uh, two things are happening here. I was in Paris two years ago and revisited some of the classical paintings. And um, at the same time, I've been dealing with this lady for at least four decades. Uh, she shows up a lot and I decided to marry them together because you don't, when you go to the museums, you don't normally see people who are, uh, may be homeless or may not be as fortunate as you. So I'm, I'm using this um, so-called bag lady in some of my work to kind of be, make a social statement about how fortunate we are and um, at the same time, bringing attention to classical work. That's about it. <laughs> wow, what a story. Thank you, Michelle. You're welcome, thank you. And congratulations. Thank you. So, um, the next one is actually William Timmons. So let me open up his work and uh, look at that. Vibrant sort of primary colors, nicely composed and the curves and the lines and uh, you know, use of green on the side this is absolutely phenomenal. This painting itself speaks, and I don't know if I need to describe it. Uh, so um, if, uh, if Bill is there, uh, Bill, can you talk about that, your painting? I don't think he's here today, no. Okay. So, uh, you know, he has another piece, I think one or two more pieces uh, of composition of, um, you know, the, uh, the subject. And the title I thought is very, very interesting. It's, uh, it's, it says, uh, the title is One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. <laughs> and uh, it is very interesting title. And like I said, I love the balance of, of the color that you know executed on this canvas. This yellow, balancing this yellow, this orange itself, even though it's not balancing, but you can see this red and this little bit of orange here is actually complementing. And this green and green here. So um, yeah, it is a very, very, very nice, uh, nice piece that you can actually go there and, and enjoy it. All right, so uh, the next one is Sue Noel Hurdy. Uh, the uh, title of this one is a Color Pops 27. Uh, I know Sue's work a uh, number of years actually. Uh, she works with uh, um, lines and parallel lines and the um, and some geometrical shapes, but this is a departure uh, from what she's been doing, I thought. And it has uh, really a depth in it. Um, she loves colors. She's married with colors. Uh, that's what I see in her statement. Uh, so if Sue is here, I would like her to talk about her piece a little bit so we can uh, enjoy it. Uh, Sue is not here, no. So, you know, um, like I said, you know, she, her, most of her work is very, very abstract, um, but this is a kind of a departure from what she's been doing. So uh, let me close this one and then um, open up the next one, which is, Beach Towel by Leah Slemmer. This is a 12 by 12 inch on wire on board. 
The reason I love this piece, because you can see that how carefully she balanced the color. On the right hand side is kind of a monochrome, but on the left hand side, it is a vibrant color. And uh, she loves uh, the family, friends. Uh, that's what I read from her statement. And she works with the figures, it's a figurative work. And uh, the way that she used the brushwork, you can see there is a layer actually. And this brushwork itself is creating a depth, very nice depth, and also it speaks with you. It's a nice story that it is telling. She actually used this one with a very nice, um, interesting composition. She cut things, they cut the subjects, not bringing the whole thing actually. That makes it more interesting. The only one is full image of the face is this kid here. But that is probably not so prominent. So if Leah is here, uh, if you can you know, talk about your piece. I don't, it looks like Lee isn't here today. Okay, but uh, you know, she has uh, more pieces um, in the show. Uh, this is really, really great paint, painting that you can appreciate. And it creates some kind of a drama too. Uh, that's what I liked about this uh, painting. All right, so uh, the next one is Francine. I want to I want to make a comment that I'm talking with Francine's assistant Nina. She said Francine can't make it today, but Nina's here on Francine's behalf. However, she can't comment on her paintings. Okay, thank you, Jean. Well, this painting is actually um, I can relate to it. Um, I read Francine's um, statement, and you know, after I um, chose this piece, she actually wrote me a wonderful letter um, and describing her feelings. Um, she thanked me. So thank you, uh, Francine. Uh, Nina, please uh, convey my you know, gratitude and thanks to her. Uh, this is, uh, the title of this one is the Squirrel Kill Walk Up to South Street. This is something that I am familiar with also. You know, I love Philly and I love every corner of Philly. And uh, I, I know immediately what she is trying to um, uh, capture. Uh, she is a, a PAFO graduate, I believe, and then uh, now uh, live in Westchester, but she makes trips to Philadelphia because she loves Philadelphia, the uh, different part of the uh, city. Uh, so it is very nicely executed. I love the looseness of the paint in this corner on the right lower hand and also on the top. Very little things she's actually uh, doing, but telling a lot of stories in it. And um, again, there's no people on this squill kill um, walk up. It looks kind of, um, it reminds me something like Turner's work actually. I don't know if you, you guys agree, but um very i mean it, it, although these colors are the monochrome but it actually on the background are very vibrant um background so uh love the composition love the way that she did the brushwork um and love the subject that she took actually um i thought it is very very interesting painting actually so um, the last one that I have here is Cecilia Grant. Uh, so this is something that I actually, um, I'm glad that I chose that um, when I look at this image online um, because what you send online, um, you know, may not do the justice to the piece. Um, 
So if you go and take a look at it in person, it is a very large piece. And she did this work on a miler, uh, not used um, often. And uh, it is acrylic, uh, I believe, on miler. And very soft, um, very loose work. A lot of transparency you can see uh, in this area. So she has large two pieces. Actually, I thought it's very, very um, interesting and phenomenal. So um, I don't know if uh, Cecilia is there uh, to talk about her piece. I, s I spoke to Cecilia earlier. She couldn't make it today. Um, so it's really interesting what she had us do to mount it to the wall. Uh, we put some nails in the wall and used a magnet set up in order to get it some distance between the walls. So it's, if anyone has a chance to see the show, it's quite beautiful. The light hits through it and hits the wall and it makes it look really radiant. Thank you, Jean. Um, well, that's all I have right now, but, but like I said, you know, there are plenty of other pieces that, uh, you know, to talk about. Um, I didn't, um, I didn't talk about the sculptures. There are excellent, excellent sculptures there. Uh, there's some tiny, you know, pottery. It's beautiful potteries um, and the artwork. Um, so, you know, uh, please go and visit the place, uh, buy pieces and uh, help each other, support art, support Abington Art Center. Uh, so I'll probably stop here and then see if you guys have any questions about this show or about my work. All right, thank you very much, Michelle. That was fascinating. So uh, we'll take woo, applause. <laughs> yes, very, very good. If anybody, I know I might have missed one or two questions in the chat. Please just ask again if I haven't asked already. I've got Rebecca says, thanks so much for the talk. Loved hearing about your process. Um, any, anybody have any questions for Michelle? Okay, going once, going twice. Pleasure listening to you from Hafsa. All right, I think that's everybody. Um, I just wanna give a couple of quick um, shout outs. Uh, if you enjoyed this talk, you can support Abington Art Center by donating. Oh, I do have a question. Okay, well, I'll ask the question. Here we go. <laughs> a lot of questions coming in. Okay, I've got one from Hafsa. She's asking, can you share a little about chalk and charcoal use in your work, please? Oh, great question. Uh, thanks, Hafsa, for your, um, you know, great question. So, yes, I use uh, charcoal in my paintings. Um, that's something uh, I learned over years, and I think um, some of the artists that I know, uh, de Kooning, uh, the Long Island artist, I think all of you know, he was using charcoal with the, uh, you know, wild media. And what it does is actually it does, um, it helps me create the form. It helps me to bring out the form uh, that I was, I'm uh, always looking for. So um, yeah, this charcoal, uh, you can buy it from Blick um, in a different like, texture and the softness, depending on how, uh, how you want it to execute on your paper. Uh, but it, like I said, it actually helps me draw the subject and also bring out the form uh, with the, the paint that I use. Now, I use, sometimes I use the charcoal beginning of the work, in the middle of the work, end of the work. There is no rule actually that I really follow. So if you ever, you know, join workshop, um, then I can show you in person. Um, so thanks for your great question. All right. Um, thank you, Michelle. I've got John Slavin says, uh, thank you. Michelle says, thank you. So does Hofsa says, thank you. Um, Larry and Rosanna is asking, can you tell us about the restrictions you were given when selecting the pieces? I didn't give you any restrictions, but maybe you had some. I don't think I understood this question. What, what is uh, the restriction exactly? 
Uh, I'm not sure um, if the, that question's kind of on our end. We don't give any restrictions. All that we ask is that the artists that are selected, their work is ready to hang when they bring it. My question was more regarding like how many. Sorry, I, I missed it. Yeah, you dropped out for a second there. Sorry, I was asking regarding like the number of pieces that you could select and possibly constrictions with sizes of the pieces. I don't think there was any restriction actually. And uh, sometimes this show uh, has a restriction on size because you know you need to eventually hang on the wall um, and there's a limited space. Uh, but number of selections, no, there is no, absolutely no restrictions. Yeah, I, um, I, I will say that Michelle did select a really large amount of pieces um, for a jury show. However, we've had shows like salon style cover. We have a huge space, so yeah, it would be, I wouldn't put it past Michelle, but it would be very difficult to fill up this space entirely. Thank you, Jean. Okay, I think I do have another question um, from Joan Schrager, and then we'll get to Jean in the chat. So Joan, why don't you ask your question? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can um, hear you. I happen to be one of those people who identifies now, late in my life, as a Photoshop artist. Okay. And um, it kind of caught my attention. I come from a time period where you could only enter slides, and now everyone is accepting online digital imagery for you know, being chosen for an exhibition. I work primarily in Photoshop and in apps. Uh, I'm an 80 year old. I started in 1993 and I have seen a change. There was a time when digital art was unacceptable. And I was curious about your feelings about that now. Oh, thank you. Um, and I'm glad that you're working uh, and taking this digital media as very seriously and you're working on it. You know, I mean, we always see the uh, acceptance uh, evolution and uh, in, in art history and in many things, actually. You know, that sometimes we cannot accept things whenever it comes new and then we eventually uh, take a, another look and see, well, this is not bad, actually. This is something very interesting. And we started accept. I mean, who would know that they when, you know, that uh, the urinals was uh, showed uh, in probably in the early. Yes. <laughs> you probably remember, right? So, who would know that urinals become so popular? It would be art. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The founder, uh, the found object that Dadaism coming from, actually. Yes. Came as Dadaism. And, uh, which something that I relate to actually, because uh, my, my work is a found object that I described to you all uh, in the beginning of my you know, lecture, uh, that the phenomena, the things are happening naturally uh, in the city on the wall and pavement and things like those are, those are found objects. And I took uh, those things and, and work on my work, own way who would know that, you know, taking pictures by my just uh, simple, you know, the uh, digital, I mean, this smartphone, you can uh, actually create uh, such a nice uh, work of art. I think, you know, we cannot deny the digital age. I don't think we cannot deny the Photoshop. I cannot, I don't think we can pass and ignore those things. Um, because you know, we, it is a creation. In a, uh, we are. This is an innovation. This is creativity. So whatever way we do that and present things uh, to the rest of the world, I think there is a um, there is a room for a space and a space for acceptance actually. But it takes time. It takes time. It's evolution. Um, 
I was not a fan of uh, digital art uh, a couple of years ago, actually. Uh, but I kind of, you know, like it. And uh, I think, you know, it is ultimately, it is uh, something on the beholder. I mean, we look at things and ultimately it's, it is a visual image. It is a, we are visual art. So whatever you see, it doesn't matter how it was created actually. Okay, but you, if you can appreciate the work of art, the composition, the ideas, I think that's what it boils down to. So thanks for sharing your experience. And thank you for an absolutely wonderful morning. You're welcome. All right, thank you, Jan and Michelle. Um, real quick, uh, Hafsa would like a link to your workshop. So I think that would be nice if you emailed it to me. And okay. then or you can email it to her directly, but we could put it in our newsletter and send it to all the artists in case they're interested. Um, I have a question from Jean Burdick. Uh, thank you for the talk. Really enjoyed seeing the relationship between your photo reference and your paintings. I guess that was a comment, not a question. Um, I've got one last question from Osana. She's saying, how is the art world changing in quarantine and beyond? Yeah, this is a great question, actually. You know, my show was, uh, postponed. I'm sure lots of you are ex experiencing that. Shows are canceled. It is not a good time, actually. It is a painful time. I'm not going to say that, well, well, we are, you know, enjoying it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, don't care, but each and every one is feeling that uh, sense of isolation, sense of quarantine, sense of not being able to go to show and appreciate works not being able to go to museums and things like that. You know, it is a tough time. But on the other hand, you know, I'm working. I'm still working. I'm still, you know, up late night. Uh, the, some of the uh, days that, you know, was really locked down, I was able to uh, drive uh, in a different uh, places where, you know, not many people are there so I can work. Uh, I think there are a couple of things that are happening also at the same time. It's going to be a revolution. Look at what we are doing here. We are actually not traveling, not wasting our time of one hour drive and this, that. We are all getting together and discussing work, you know, talking about art in a very simple, although it may not be very simple for <laughs> IT people, but, you know, we are actually uh, talking. We are seeing each other. We are sharing our thoughts and philosophies and art with each other. I think this is opening up a new um, things for us, uh, for the artists. We'll see, time will tell us how things are going, but ultimately we have to get together. We have to get together. We have to go to uh, the, uh, you know, uh, galleries, uh, chit chat. Uh, we need to buy art. We need to take a look at it. I mean, right now it's like uh, buying a clothes from Amazon and not touching it, not seeing the clothes, not textures. Um, I mean, it, it's something, painting is tough. I can't pay, you know, buy painting online. Actually, I have to look at it and see it up close and personal. So uh, yes, um, I think this is, uh, this is interesting. It's evolving. Uh, so we'll see how, where it goes actually. It's a great question. All right, thank you very much, Michelle. Um, it doesn't look like there's any more questions. So I'm just going to plug a couple of things. Uh, you can come see the show. It's up until August 29th. Our gallery hours are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, noon to 6 p.m. It also will be online shortly. To be the first in the know about anything going on at Abington Art Center, you can sign up for our newsletter by going to abingtonartcenter.org and clicking the envelope button in the lower right hand corner. Last but not least, you can support Abington Art Center by going to abingtonartcenter.org slash donate. Uh, once again, thank you, Michelle. You are so great. You did put together such a great show for us. Um, thank you to all the artists and anyone who joined today. And we hope to see you all really soon. Thank you. Well, I really you know, wanted to thank you again, Jane and Jenny and all the artists that actually plugged in today and submission and all those great questions and, uh, and really took your time listening and uh, you know, listening and hearing my work and sharing your thoughts and everything. So 
thank you thank you thank you thank you abington art center yes support art support art centers and uh, we'll see you each other probably in the uh, uh, end of uh, this month august 28th i guess so uh, yeah. Yeah, That's I'll right. be happy Thank to be reminding me. We are going to have a closing reception August 28th. It's going to be 6 to 8 p.m. We're going to create an event bright so you can register online. So look out for that. We will be emailing it to you guys first because you guys are the artists, that is. You guys are the most important. We're celebrating you. Um, so look out for that in your email shortly. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. All right. Bye everyone, have a beautiful weekend.